I'm wondering if you can just talk about what it's like for the studio and for you personally to leave Killzone behind. It's really exciting. It is fantastic when you've worked on a franchise for more than a decade, actually in my case, it's been almost 15 years, to do something that's so radically different and at the same time kind of stands on the shoulders of, of what we made before. I mean, we really love making fluid, awesome combat and we're trying to do that again. Uh, we're really into making fantastic science fiction worlds and we're doing that again. So there are a ton of similarities, but I think more importantly, this is really fresh. And we wanted to make, after all the grit, the grit style of beauty that's in Killzone, we wanted to make something that's beautiful in kind of a majestic way, and a world that you want to be in instead of escape away from. And uh, no, so it's very exciting. The team are in love with the project. Do you feel like anybody's missing Killzone yet? No, I, I mean, there's a lot of guys that sent me proposals to do stuff with Killzone, but we're, we're very focused and committed to Horizon Zero Dawn at the moment. What about uh, Shadowfall's director? Steven, is he still with the studio? Steven is here, yeah. Okay, he's working on something newish. Steven is, uh, he's helping me with a lot of stuff here in the studio. So he's, he's part of our guerrilla management team and he's, uh, he's very involved. Do you see it as a closing of the book on the Killzone franchise or do you think Sony's still interested and you guys are still interested in keeping that door open in the future? Um, you know, it's, Killzone is, is very key and very core to Guerrilla. Uh, we have a, a, a ton of love for the franchise. Uh, we did make uh, a, a wonderful art book. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen it. But that's kind of, a, in a way, it's conclusive. But at the same time, we'll leave everything open for the future. I mean, it's, it's who am I to say we'll never do anything. But it's, it, there, there's too much in it to, uh, to ever make any kind of definitive statements on it. So in general, what's it like for the team to make something new? How well have they adapted to the big challenge of Horizon? It is a monster of a project. I mean, in, in terms of the, the number of features, it's probably fourfold as, as, as complex and as, as, as huge as, um, as, as any Killzone game has been. The challenge for us is that it's a bigger game, uh, but it's also a new IP, so all the game rules will have to be established. And then it's a new genre for the studio. So we, as a studio, we've had to actually hire entirely new disciplines. The story writing is much more important in an, in an action RPG than it is in a first-person shooter game. We didn't have a quest team, for example, so that's a, a team of, uh, let's say, a dozen people that we all had to, uh, to bring in from, from other teams. So it's been a lot of hiring, it's been a lot of exploration, uh, it's a seamless open world, so you can imagine the requirements on the technology team. I think it's all of those, those different challenges and the number of them that all of that combined determines the complexity. But complexity is great, we love that. This game really does stand on the shoulders of Killzone. So I think if you, if you look at the team, uh, Matthijs de Jong is game director, he's done Killzone 2, uh, he's done Killzone 3, he's done a ton of games here, as has JB as the art director. Uh, so we're, we're using the vast body of experience that's here, but we need to supplement that with somebody like John Gonzalez, who's worked in, inside the Fallout series, which is a, a, a great body of experience to pull from. So I think it's predominantly people that have grown up here, but in certain areas we've had to uh, very specifically hire some, uh, some new expertise. It's super challenging. It is, it's way outside of our comfort zone, uh, but that's, you know, it's been a crazy ride in that regard. But at the same time, since from day one, and, and, and now talking four and a half, five years ago when we started working on this game in a, in a very small team, people have been truly in love with this, uh, with, with this project, uh, all of it, with Aloy, with the world, the natural beauty, with the fact that these machines are, you know, the references to Jurassic Park in there. It is something that we really, really want to make. And, you know, who worries about these challenges? We're just going to make it happen. I would say that if people are truly inspired what they're making and they really feel that this is what we should be making, that's more important than you, know, you could define you know, an, another iteration within a franchise or get a different property and make it easy. Uh, you're going to run in challenges. If the team is intrinsically motivated, to me that is, uh, that's probably the, the single biggest factor for success. So you guys had a good foothold in the shooter market. Have you guys studied the RPG market quite a bit? Are you feeling confident about Horizon's place in a supposed RPG field? I mean, people that make games for a living, uh, they probably make games for a living because they love playing games. And, and everybody here plays everything. So of course, we, we've checked out everything, both on the RPG side and on the action side. So yes, we, we tried everything out. But, but it's not so much that this, 
this concept, this project didn't necessarily originate from a gap in, let's say, a PlayStation portfolio or a gap in the, in the industry lineup. This really is a project that we wanted to make. It, it, I think it's more intrinsic than that, the motivation. You know, I'm, I'm actually remarkably surprised and pleasantly surprised that people don't find it strange that Gorilla is making this game. Uh, if anything, what I've heard is that it's just awesome that we go as developers of FPSs break out into this kind of gorgeous new world and have this wonderful female lead um, and, and this kind of very narrative-driven game. Of course, I shouldn't forget to say these uh, magnificent um, uh, machines as well. Everybody likes it that we're making this. And I think the, our, our heritage as uh, FPSs probably gives some credibility to the combat, which is really important in this game. I think it's a pleasant surprise to, to everybody. Yeah, but you still feel like there's enough DNA there from Killzone that even Killzone fans will jump into this game and be like, oh, it's still the gorilla I love. That, that's certainly the sounds I'm, I'm hearing from, from the people I talk to. There is combat in there and people that, that like Horizon Zero Dawn for that aspect, I think are really going to find what they want. But there's also new people, new audiences, people that are gonna buy into the story and, and are really gonna appreciate that or, or people that just wanna wander in this open world that's just explore these, these incredible mysteries that we're setting up for the player to uncover. I think there's a lot of different areas and different motivations for people to, uh, to jump into. So for people that might be new to a guerrilla game, what is guerrilla's specialty? What's your style? What stands out mm. as kind of signature to this studio and this team? I would say that uh, so we, we like building science fiction worlds, right? That, that's been consistent in everything that we do. Uh, and, and that's no different here in Horizon Zero Dawn. And it's kind of hard science fiction in the sense that you know, it, it doesn't get close to fantasy. Everything is thought through and kind of should be able to happen in a certain way. At least it's, it's coherent. And I think what's really consistent is the tactical combat. So the, the way you approach the encounters with the enemies, you kind of prepare, you engage. Um, the combat needs to be fluent, it needs to be deep. I think those two things are, uh, are very core to everything we've done before and what we're doing again with Horizon Zero Dawn. And we keep liking to push the boundaries of PlayStation platforms with everything we do. It's kind of a little side hobby of ours. Yeah, you guys are such a strong team technically. Can you talk about customizing your own tech while you chose to stay with your own tech and then what that's been like to adapt to an open world? I mean, that's been a, a, a huge project. Uh, Michiel van der Leeuw, our, our technical director, uh, he started working on, on the technology that we use today uh, in the late 90s. So we, we have people from day one. And that technology has evolved, but this project, I think, on the technical side, probably has been the most challenging so far because of the open world. I mean, it's a huge accomplishment, the fact that we get that much detail on the screen and it's that vast a world for you to explore. So one of the interesting things that stood out to me yesterday was the fact that the concept art team, they were mostly engineers. Is that a philosophy that spread throughout the entire studio? Is kind of that cross-disciplinary aspect or is that just that specific team? Well, the, the, the team, we call it the, the, the visual design team. You're right, they, they include a lot of industrial designers and people from, from engineering schools. I, I think the vision um, has always been that we like to make stuff that at least looks like it could have been made, right? Stay away from things becoming too fantastical and have a deep design behind it. Um, so we, we have people that you know, have a drawing background, but also engineering guys on, on the VIS department. And they work very closely with the game designers, so that's something that, that functionality of the designs is very core to what we're doing. So you'd like to see a Thunder John in real life at some point? You got it. Put in a request to Sony Marketing to build us one. <laughs> the team, has it ballooned up a bit for Horizon Zero Dawn? Do you want to talk about the evolution of just the studio and the size of the team for this project? Yeah, I think when we, um, when we started with, um, with Guerrilla back in 2000, we were about 30 guys. And when we completed the original Kill Zone for the PlayStation 2 in 2004, I think by then we had scaled up to approximately 45 guys. Uh, so currently, I think we have a team of about 230 people here in Amsterdam. Pretty much everybody now is working on, on Horizon so that you can hardly compare it, right? A, a team of this, these deep specializations and have, having a group of 10 people working on the AI, uh, the behaviors underlying these herds of robots uh, to get that kind of 
push behind these, uh, the, these sets of features is fantastic for us. How do you run and focus a team so big? What are the tricks you've learned along the way to make this efficient? To run a studio like yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it helps if you've been doing it for a while. And I think what makes my job fairly easy is that we have a lot of people who are really talented and who have been here for a long time. So our technical director, Michiel, from day one, uh, our art director, JB, um, from day one, Matthijs uh, de Jonge, our game director, from day one, our exec producer, Angie, and Lambert, lead producer, have been here uh, well, a lot more than 10 years already. So we're kind of a, a close-knit group of friends that each have their areas of specialties, and that just makes it super easy to work together. So you guys are here in Amsterdam. Do you think that because there's not that many game studios around here that it just lends to the consistency of the team or why is there such a tight bond and so little turnover? I think people enjoy living and working out of Amsterdam. It's it's a pleasant place for a development studio to be. I mean, it's a pretty environment. It's a good location to attract talent. And the fact that people are happy here and we have a lot of creative freedom that we get from PlayStation uh, makes our, our jobs interesting enough for key talent to, uh, to stay here. So our team has been together for a long time. But then as we talked earlier about the specific disciplines that we've hired in for, it hasn't been difficult to attract new talent, which is great. I think Amsterdam actually plays a good role in that sense. It really helps us as, as a studio that we're in a nice location. Yeah. What about Guerrilla Cambridge? Do you want to describe the philosophy for that studio as well? So Guerrilla Cambridge currently is working on the launch title for uh, PlayStation VR. It's Riggs Mechanized Combat League. Um, it's really exciting to, alongside making Horizon Zero Dawn, to also be working on a on a virtual reality game. And I think that that also is based on the DNA of Gorilla as a team. So the team in Cambridge worked on um, on the kills on series as well, uh, kills on mercenary. And uh, they're taking that, that combat experience, that intensity uh, further. So that, that's a game that we're really excited about as well. Do you like having the two completely separate studios? Do you think they'd ever merge and work on the same project in the future? I think there is no other way. I think a group of people, and it's a much smaller team in Cambridge, but if they don't work on their own game, I think that's what teams want to do. That's what inspires people to have your own projects and, and just make it really great. Uh, so that, that's just how things work. How are you feeling about VR at this point? Uh, are you feeling pretty bullish on the concept still? It's great. I mean, the, the, the experience uh, that we're getting out of it now is, is super immersive. It's, uh, I think it, it certainly is a, is a new layer to the, to the experience. For a, It is an arena shooter at the end of the day. So yeah, we're very psyched about it. So what are you looking forward to in general terms in terms of like the future of the studio? Where do you think there's excitement and momentum within the studio here? Well, the excitement right now is definitely with this project, right? So we're, we're, we're due out uh, late February, February 28th next year. We're really, really excited to, um, uh, well, we're now in the later stage of development and to get this game out. And the world and the story is so rich that there are tons of ideas to uh, what we can do next with it. Uh, but that's roughly where we're at at the moment.